Clint Pasias joining us right now, lead editor at DodgersNation.com. Did I nail the pronunciation too? How did I do? Crushed it. Crushed it, Scott. Appreciate you. you. That's awesome. And I love that you're already (laughs) moved on to the NFL season there. You're with that hat. You're it's it's sadly, sadly, it's becoming a tradition here in the house where I get to flip. You know, at least my my Eagles are five and zero right now. I feel a little goal. better about that. And hey, you know, right now, jokingly on social media, let's go Rangers. I'm all about Creed. I'm all about the Rangers, but we're here to talk about the Dodgers for sure. <laughs> okay, so let's start super big picture. Okay, because this team has been a playoff team for so many years now. Is the way that you will think about the you know decade plus run of the Dodgers, which is still continuing like 20 years from now. Wow. That team was like the Atlanta Braves. It just dominates in the division and they'd get to the playoffs every year and they won yeah. one, one year and I'm, I'm okay. I mean, 2020, it's still the same tournament and all that, but that people will say is if they don't pull off titles at some point, they're just a good regular season ball club. Hey, you have connective tissue there with Stan Kasten running both of those clubs in some way, shape, or form. Not throwing Stan under the bus, just putting that out there. Uh, but yeah, at this point, you know, Dodgers Nation, the fan base, it, you know, it went from frustrating. It went from there's a lot of excuses. And yeah, even at this team, you could point to a lot of different things that went wrong. Starting pitching, they did not have a, a glut of starting pitching ready to go. Um, but at some point, you know, it, it just it gets embarrassing. This is. Uh, you guys know how it is on social media. You know how it is on the X, as they call it now. Um, you, there's a lot of smack talk. Dodgers fans talk a lot of smack back, and then it seems like we can't back it up, uh, or the team can't back it up unless it's a shortened season and they still feel like they're playing game 61 of the season in 2020, which I will say, I'm going to point it out before I get a lot of crap for that, everybody had the same amount of opportunity to win that year. And the Dodgers just happened to do it. Also, it helps when Corey Seager goes on God mode like he's doing again. Yeah, they could have re-signed Corey Seager too, couldn't they have? They could have. They could. I mean, it's Grazie, sorry. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> sorry to bring that up. Hey, we're, we're Eagles. We're Eagles fans together. Okay, so we we've got a lot of sunshine here that we can bring. Okay, <laughs> yes, Corey sir. Seager probably would have been the play, but hey, you know what? You guys will get Shohei Otani, and all will be right in the world. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll yeah. spend a few because, minutes on that because he's because he's a good playoff player. I, I know he's going to be a great playoff player. <laughs> he's got a lot of. I hope to see it one day. Yeah. Do you <laughs> see a difference in this team? You watch this team. We watch a lot of baseball. We don't watch every game like you watch every game. Do you see yeah. a difference in this team in the playoffs compared to what you see night in and night out for 162 games? A thousand percent. We're going beyond a hundred percent. It's it's the the calendar shifts and you see the tension. You see you see the team get nervous. I explained it on on my show where uh, it's like it's like you you know you almost got in a car wreck with with grandpa in the car and every time you get in the car now like I don't want to disappoint grandpa. Like I I when when they made and I'm sure at some point you guys might might bring it up or whatever but when when they made the seismic shift in the roster last postseason after last postseason after last postseason you 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 uh, let Trey Turner Justin Turner Cody Bellinger go I was like all right maybe it's this maybe it's this core maybe you change it up and you you go a different route um, but you saw the same nerves you saw the same um, just kind of fear and i don't know if it's fear but they look scared out there like they didn't want to embarrass or or disappoint the fan base there at dodger stadium so the excitement of maybe they move on maybe they're not a hundred win team maybe they're not even a a division winning team maybe they don't need to open at dodger stadium where kind of over the last decade they don't play well in the playoffs at Dodger Stadium, and we saw it again. And, you know, I mean, credit to the Diamondbacks. They came out uh, ready to win and re- with nothing to lose, and that's a very fun ball club um, that that had excitement like we saw with the Padres last year. Yeah, a lot of credit to the Diamondbacks. But a lot of credit to the Dodgers. They were still in all of these games. Yes. But to me, and you can't the, – the series doesn't hinge on one at bat, but the reason – you are putting on an NFL hat right now, and I hope it's an Eagles hat if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 got birds. You have, we got birds. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> go birds. The reason you have your NFL hat on today and not a Dodger blue hat for a game four isn't because you brought Austin Barnes in. But that is a mic to me, that's a microcosm of what I see from afar from the Dodgers mm-hmm. that they would not 
that they would bring their last possible position player off the bench, and it's Austin Barnes, a fellow backup catcher. He's had a better career yeah. than I have had, but that is yeah. like who, – And who hurts. was he replacing? He was David a, Peralta. David Peralta. I David know he's Peralta. cold right now, but David Peralta? He hit 317 against lefties during the year. And I know it's like 30 some at bats. So what? He had a, I mean, are you kidding me? We're comparing those two in terms of hitting profiles against anyone right now in the bigs? Yeah, we're, we see some, uh, I wouldn't call them panic moves, but um, I'm, we're, we're Dave Roberts defenders. It's getting much more difficult to be a Dave Roberts defender. However, it's hard to really say he did a whole lot wrong because Barnsey had a great, you know, from August on, he hit, you know, I think over 270 or whatever. He was getting on base. He was putting good wood on, on the ball. Um, still, the fact that you were uh, left in that situation where you – you pinch hit your, you know, six point five million dollar offseason acquisition. Somebody who carried you through uh, the most of the season, and go to your backup catcher who hadn't played since what I think September thirtieth, in the biggest, you know, the, the spot that's going to keep your season alive. It is pretty dang questionable. Uh, and and when you look at at when they did maybe overthink the roster heading into the the DS here, putting that twenty six man roster together, and Dave Roberts told. Told you know told us that the reason they went with uh, um, who am I looking for? They went with uh, Colton Wong, who had a nice series off the bench, but they went with Colton Wong over Ahmed Rosario because the Diamondbacks don't really have left-handed pitching. That situation might not come up. Well, it did, and it was in an elimination game, and you know Austin Barnes is <laughs> the guy they went with. Do you think it's more surprising how bad the beginning of games went for them? or that the team is looking at Mookie and Freddie and getting consistent, incredible performances almost every single day during an 162-game campaign. And then they turn to them, and I know it's only three games, and Mookie said it himself, I contributed nothing to this series. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. That's um, This is a team that lives and dies with Marcus Lynn Betts and Fred Word Friedman. That's not his real name, but to have that <laughs> happen um, – I don't know if it if it stems from, you know, the the, the first inning of game one. You know, everything kind of started with uh, and, and also big time love to James Outman. It was it was a very tough play in center field, but you know, it, he healed it. He's going to tell you he's got to make that play, and then the walls started closing in immediately. That's the first fly out, the first out. Kershaw goes on to give up six runs in the inning. They're down 9 nothing before the seats are warm in L.A., and people could actually get into the stadium because of shite traffic. Um, everything started closing in from there, and Mookie – Mookie just did not take good swings and you know, he didn't want to hear about it after game two, you have no choice after game three. And he owned up. It's like, look, I did nothing to help uh, your, your top two hitters in the lineup have one base hit in the three games. And it's on an infield single that Freddie barely beat out. That's tough. So um, uh, to borrow from blink 182 and our, our friend Orioles broadcaster, Kevin Brown, you know, Mookie and Freddie, where are you? Cause they did not show up. <laughs> I am available for weddings and bar mitzvahs in the office. That is tremendous. <laughs> I don't think Blink-182 or Creed are going to be sung at weddings or bar mitzvahs, but hey, you know what? I hope we'll, not. We'll see, it. we'll see if it works out. What, what changes need to be made? Is, is, is the whole offseason hinged on Otani being the starting pit? Oh, wait, no. He's not going to be a starting pitcher next year. So. Yeah. Is is this a? Do you feel like this needs to be a reverse course, or are the Dodgers going to say, "No, we're good. Look how many games we won. The playoffs are really tough." Yeah this this is this is the hardest one. I thought you know you know being a fan and being you know somebody in media doing all this kind of stuff. I thought I knew everything. So I thought after last season again they they really changed the culture in the clubhouse yeah you still have some pieces in there uh with with freddie with mookie uh max muncie's a max a, a huge voice in that clubhouse but you lost justin turner it's like maybe it's not on him but the, there was a change there that's a seismic change that's 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 that was 
Dave Roberts, field general in there. He had something he wanted to say to somebody. You tell JT first, and he puts his arm around a player. You lose that, and you change so much of, of that team, of, of the, the roster, the, the culture in there. You assume, okay, maybe this is it. Maybe it's different. Maybe it's not going to be such a boring team that we had saw. You know, 21, they fell apart. There was injuries. 22, they just they didn't have they didn't you know they didn't uh they didn't take enough of the the gas station you know get hard pills and and crush an energy drink and go play and have a good time uh this this team i thought would be different they somehow roll out of bed and win another 111 or 100 games and then this happens i don't know what you do dave roberts brilliant manager one of the best managers you'll ever see yeah he has the keys to uh uh ferrari to a maserati to whatever the hell car you you want to call it um and he's one of the better drivers but i don't know a, a break locks up something happens uh during the postseason and i don't know what you change but I'm sure Andrew Friedman, Brandon Gomes, they're going to have some some uh, interesting conversations over the next few days. And Dodger fans, they want to see something change. This this is the offseason where you did your change last offseason and ultimately gave you the same results. Technically worse. You got swept. At least you won a game against the Padres. What what do you change now? What do you change now? I ask you, Kratzy, you've been there. You've you've you know, you've played this team in the postseason. And it's a team that's built to eventually, you know, beat a team down in seven games or whatever. They, they lost that dog. They oh. did. They did. And and just, just to mention, just to talk about that that series, they didn't hit worth a lick that series. They got a couple big hits. I didn't keep a ball in front. Manny Machado moved up to second base, and Cody Bellinger hit a base hit through the hole to win the to win the extra inning game. And then we went we went four seamer up and in it. It ran across the plate, and Bellinger hit a dinger in Milwaukee. I think it's the first ever MVP of the NLCS that hit under 180. <laughs> we'll take him where we can get him. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. But that's yeah. But that's also part of. I say those exact same things. On the flip side, as a Dodger, and I'm saying as a Dodger front office, and being like, that's all it takes in the postseason. That's all yeah. we need. So we're just going to keep plugging away. So any more you bats? Had, you had a Bellinger hit, and you had a, a massive game saving play from Chris Taylor. The moments that that really get a team going. And the last two off seasons, you know, they said it multiple times last off season. You know, we just didn't get the hit. The other team did. They said the same. You know, Mookie said essentially the same thing last night. You know, we didn't get the hit. They did. I think that from what I've gathered from Dodger fans, it will be a bigger disappointment in their minds if they don't land Shohei Otani versus the disappointment that they just faced in the playoffs. My view of the feedback that I get from our chat and YouTube and all the socials that get hit up is that half of the Dodger fans that are in the FT fam that follow us are like, yo, we're not expecting much here. We, we don't have the pitching. Um, we just don't feel good about this team. We don't think we're a world series team. Sure. We're supposed to be the diamondbacks, but I don't think I did not get positive vibes about this team going into right now, not going into the year, not going into a month ago right now, but the conversation already while the series was starting is like, yo, when is it time for us to start talking Otani again? Um, so I think it's going to be one of the biggest stories that we've ever seen in the offseason. And I, I do genuinely think that the Dodgers have been talked about with Otani and linked to him so much already that if yeah. they don't get him, I think it's going to be one of the most devastating time periods in the history of the franchise, which is crazy because it's like one dude and he can go anywhere and there's other teams with money and whatever else. But it's, it's that much of a front runner and it's that much reliance on from Dodger fans. Do you get the same vibes? Yeah, I mean, this is the whole – we keep going back. I keep going back to last offseason and everything was like, we're letting all these guys go to to save up money. You know, you're trying to save at the piggy bank for – or the Shohei piggy bank. Um, I, I don't know if Shohei is 100% the answer, but I know everybody is clamoring for this guy. They're looking at him as the savior – for this team in the postseason next year and beyond. But the problem is, you know, you guys already said it. Shohei isn't pitching in 2024. And 
the Dodgers put together, the, I think it was historically the worst starting pitching performance over the three games. I mean, you have Lance Lynn, uh, you know, he had an inning, you know, of, of some dog, two innings of dog in there, but then the wheels came off really quick. Um, he was he was the, the 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 starting pitcher leader going two and two thirds inning. That that's just not going to cut it. So, so you need more. You need more than Shohei. So yeah. okay. And JD so, Martinez had a nice year. That's JD yeah, was that's, phenomenal in during the regular season. He played in what is only 120, 130 games, whatever it is. He missed significant time. Over 100 RBI, 30 homers. JD is back. He did what he's supposed to do. Uh, sadly, JD does not pitch. And also, play. sadly, Shohei doesn't either. right? But sadly, yeah. next year Shohei's a DH only, and so is JD. Yeah. So, is it successful if Shohei comes over and he hits thirty-three homers and one hundred and five RBI? No, because if you're expecting uh, it, more, no. From if they add 53. two or three, I don't even know what you know what, what there. You don't have the Garrett Cole. Yeah, I mean he's he's got some bomb dogs in there. Uh, you don't have a Garrett Cole uh, this coming winter. You don't you don't really have like the the extremely elite starting pitching that's going to be available out there. And yeah, the Dodgers have some really good young talent. They are going to get Walker Bueller back uh, next season. But you don't know what he's going to look like. Uh, you don't know what Clayton Kershaw is going to be, uh, where he's going to be, what he's going to be doing, and 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 if how you know, well, he can pitch into next season. So you need pitching and I don't know how much is available out there. Um, but Shohei nice, not going to be a savior. I will point out there is still a pretty big difference in stats that front offices are looking at. I'm telling you the OPS plus hundreds league average, big number. And they go weighted runs created plus I do OPS plus usually for fans because weighted runs sounds too nerdy and the stats are very similar. Appreciate but it. Yes, 184 <laughs> for Shohei, 134 for JD. That's a massive difference still. And it's no slight. 134 is like all-star status. 184 is MVP status in terms of just the offense. That's just an offensive number. So he was 304, 412, 654 slug, 44 dingers. And uh, not, RBIs doesn't matter. The Angels suck, so I'm not looking at those that much. But 95 RBIs. So yeah. he's going to help the offense a ton if he's in this series yeah. that happened just now. Because that's the thing. I mean, yes, the pitching sucked, and we'll get to them in a sec. But um, what was the final score last night? 4-2? 4-2. 4-2. Four two. Four two. Four two. Yeah. Like, Dodgers, I, I, we said this about the Braves, too. Like, they were going to have to – you're going to have to win some games in a series like this, like 5-4. Also, the Diamondbacks yes. staff's good. It's not elite. It's good. Mm -hmm. So – I, I know, you know, it's it's kind of like this struggle where some people are like, oh, we didn't have the pitching, whatever. But I'm like, but yeah. you didn't have the offense either. Not in this series, at least. Offense yeah, the didn't last, show up. The last two postseasons, they really didn't have the offense. Last year, the bullpen was much worse, and that's kind of what didn't help them get past the Padres. But the bats, you know, you got to put up some runs, you know. Uh, my my co-host likes to say, if you want the dub, you got to slug. I, I say, if you want the dub, go score some runs. You score more points the other team, you win. It's crazy. It's a simple game when you when you think about it. And and yeah, it comes from the top. And you know, Shohei's not going to be batting first, second, and third in the Dodger lineup next year. He's not going to do enough. And solo homers, as we saw from JD in the series, you know, he had I think he just had the one bomb. Um, you know, it's not going to do enough. Just the one homer is not going to you need to get some guys on, get some ducks on the pond, drive them in, keep the line moving, uh, all that jazz. And uh Shohei nice. Very nice, but again, not the difference maker. And there's there's just a world of problems. Is it is it the culture? I don't think that uh, I don't think that. I, I don't know. This is the most lost I've been with this team for sure. A world of problems with a hundred win team. <laughs> sounds like it's sounds real, like it's you're real playing, tough. You're playing the world's smallest fiddle. A hundred <laughs> wins because the team the, the team across the street and in L. A. They would love to get a hundred wins in two seasons. But who is going <laughs> to hey, get? Hey. 211 wins, one uh, postseason win the last two years. That's, that's pretty rough. So here it rough. is. So here it is. Here's your rotation next year. Walker Bueller, Bobby Miller. Ma, this is where you pick me up. Blake Snell. Right. You got – oh, Blake Snell's honestly – that's that's my guy. Jordan uh, Montgomery. Yeah, but that, what about the young dudes? And what about? I mean, we, we got to yeah, bring up. Got, yeah, it's 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 Ryan. Got to bring up Emmett. Like what? Yeah, oh, fill this. You out know, for I us. have I have a Clayton Kershaw take, but I'm too afraid to put it on on 
you know, out to the world. But I think one, he's uh, he's got to be done. He's got to be done at this point. And it's not because like, you know, I, Dodger fans don't. I I love Clayton Kershaw with every fiber of my being. I just I don't know how he can want to come back to this. You know, last year it had the feeling of jobs not finished. Uh, you know, this time you you were picked out of a grocery store to fight prime Mike Tyson and he just wailed on you. He was ready. Um, and it's falling apart, man. The shoulder's not good. And it's the Dodgers. They don't tell you what's going on. So I think there's a point if we're talking about, you know, I keep going back to it last off season. The change was you lose Justin Turner. That is a massive voice in that clubhouse. The, the guy right next to him, was Clayton Kershaw. He's not doing anything wrong. He's not the guy who's going to be out there, um, you know, hitting leadoff. But he's the guy who Dave loves to start in game one. And I don't know if he's a game one starter anymore. So there's a lot of questions with Clayton, man. And, and you know, I, this was not the send off I think anybody was hoping for. But beyond the Kershaw, there is there is some brightness. And you mentioned Damit Sheehan. You got Ryan Pepio, who if he did not – you know, his side didn't give out at the, the end of spring training. He was he was a man on a mission. Um, and there's there's other guys, you know, down in the system. Kyle Hurt. You have uh, uh, Landon Knack. I mean, there's there's some names down there that are intriguing, but they're not like, all right, this team's going to go out and be a World Series favorite. Yeah, Blake Snell. That that's that's really really nice. Um, Jordan Montgomery, very good pitcher. He's not going to excite the fan base. But uh, those are those are some of the moves that at least tell your fans, look, we're trying. We're, we're going to do what we can to make this team right, make this team better. And, you know, it's a win of an offseason. If you go out and get like a Blake Snell and a Shohei, it's also a lot of money. Mitch, a lot of prices. Yes, that is definitely some expensive <laughs> Dodger dogs. But let's say let's say, OK, I have I have the answer. All right. There's I'm a left hander available for the Dodgers. This year he went a decent 13 and five. With a two four six ERA, with a with a plus one seventy seven ERA plus ERA plus. So he's almost he, he's and almost he's only t- he's only looking for one year deals, probably in like the ten to fifteen million dollar range. Mm-hmm. Do you want him? How many starts am I going to get out of him? Twenty five. Sounds good for the regular season. We can make Fine. it through another regular season. I'll take him, but I, you know, I need. A, so you're going to leave him I, off the playoff roster? I don't know. You do don't, I leave? Do I leave Hall of Famers off the playoff roster? You don't have the. <laughs> you don't have the, as the Phillies say to leave Clayton Kershaw off the playoff roster. But that is my. That is for me. I ask that question, and if I would have Doc here, if I would have Dave Roberts here, I would ask the same thing. Was that a bl- obligatory? Game one start. Was that automatic? Like you were bringing Austin Barnes in for David yeah. Peralta automatic? That, what was your that, alternative? that was honestly, that was just the state of the rotation. You know, the, the, the Julio Arias, you know, situation that, uh, that was, uh, that, that really just threw a wrench in the whole plan, the whole system. Not that he was having a great season. And, you know, I don't want to talk too much about, about that situation because, you know, I don't think it's a Dodger fan really that wants to see that guy back. But with Kershaw, that was what you had. Bobby Miller, rookie. You probably don't want to throw him out there in, in game one. Uh, hindsight, I probably would have gone Lance Lynn just because he is a guy who has that raw and has that dog in him. But um, to to the question, yeah, you're looking at the numbers. You're plugging in 25 starts with all of all of the, the Hall of Fame type of backing that you can get out of Kirsch, you, you plug that into the starting rotation for the regular season. But obligatory uh, game one start, uh, uh, I would I would say it's like a 60-40, maybe in 50-50. It was what they had. Okay. All right. I, I like Bobby Miller game one. Set a tone with a young guy as you're moving forward with your run, young rotation. Yeah. It's just hard to and do that and look back because he didn't pitch well. I, I agree. I, I love yeah. Bobby Miller, and I thought he was going to do well. I'm saying before you make the decision. Sure. If you yeah, really I don't mean, agree, Bobby would have that guy. I really feel Bobby would have been. You know, if it was game one, he would have had. You know, he had the weight of all of this. Uh, you know, terror or whatever we're going to call. You know, all of the uh, uh, the scared and the frightened team trying to put that on his back, and um, he's he succeeded. Uh, in the past during this season, you know, he's kind of been that stopper, but 
situation got very big for him very quick and that's to be expected you know this is his first go through with this he's still very much a work in progress uh, progress they did not expect him to you know even come up and and be on the big league roster in may let alone starting game two for them in the nlds if i say one person's name do you get angry and tell me which way do you get angry trevor bauer was a really good pitcher <laughs> Uh, I, I will, I will limit my comments on that. I'll just say, you know, I, I hope he's having a nice, uh, you know, season in Japan and, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a public figure. It says in my, my Twitter profile, but, uh, if you're looking at the picture, if you're looking at the numbers and you eliminate any human being to any person, yeah, you want someone with, uh, the ilk and the backing of the, uh, the Mickey Mouse Cy Young in your, in your rotation there. Fair, fair. All right. Lastly, what is going to be the top complaint in your mind from your fan base? Like, what are you going to hear about? It's it's always, sadly, always Dave Roberts. It's forever going to be fire Dave Roberts. We have these comments. <laughs> oh, oh, listen. Uh, wait, you have to wait, explain wait. to them how the modern manager works. Okay. It's very simple. Yeah. They yeah. don't have that much say. There's like five dudes that tell the front office, shut the fuck up. We, we went yeah. over this the other day, right? Dusty says, yeah, shut the fuck up. Bochi says, shut the fuck up. Doc does not. No. So people need to relax. Hey, guess who else does that every second they can? Yankee fans. I can't stand Booney, the worst, blah, yeah. blah, blah. I'm like, do you see your roster right now? You guys suck right now. This year, like their veterans either got hurt or fell apart. I'm like, the team sucks. Any manager that was managing them and that – and Rodon was a nothing. Like you add everything up, they had two players on a twenty-six man roster. Essentially, I'm like, yeah. What does that have to do with Aaron Boone? Like, <laughs> you're blaming him for everything. Yeah, I'm, 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 obviously, I put way more on front offices most of the time because ninety percent of the front offices in baseball are running the ship. They make the big bucks. They exactly do all of that. The roster, the decisions, yeah. the game planning. And there's a reason why they won't come out and say otherwise. And actually, there are now, this is becoming a thing, quite a few front office people around the game that actually just fucking lie. They come out and they say, oh, it's not, everything's on the manager, it's not me. That is such bullshit, and I will say that for a fact. Uh, we'll just say, you know, the Dodgers have a way of choosing their words and choosing their narratives, um, you know, very wisely for them. Um, to give Dave his credit, he is a brilliant manager of people. He keeps these teams together, and that's the only thing that really gets you through multiple hundred win seasons. You know, I'll throw back to that 2018 team that was a hodgepodge that uh, Cody Bellinger didn't have his best year. You brought in Matt Kemp as part of some sort of weird salary, uh, um, you know, shedding with with the Braves. They had uh, who else did they have? They had um, Yasiel they had just, Puig. Puig, there you go. I was going with Puig. Somehow he made that team into a cohesive unit. And, you know, also Kike not getting all the playing time in the world. CT3 having a really good, you know, uh, a career up to that point. Uh, not that he hasn't since. I'm just saying, like, at that point, like, he's probably starting anywhere else. But he's kind of, you know, relegated to to that utility knife. We call him the, the, the uh, Swiss, uh, or is it Chris, Chris Tamer, Chris, I don't know. I can't, I'm trying to steal my buddy's thing, but anyways, he, <laughs> I, I crushed that one guys. Make sure that's a cut on Twitter. Like I want to see yes. that. <laughs> yeah. You'll retweet like, watch, the hell out of that. Yeah. Watch this idiot <laughs> stumble to steal someone else's joke. Um, but Dave, Dave can keep these guys together and keep them, uh, you know, he keeps the line moving in the regular season and he keeps people happy. And he understands the, the people you point to in your clubhouse that are going to control the clubhouse. Jason Hayward this season, you know, this is a guy they, they, you know, the Cubs, thank you. You paid 22 or most of the $22 million for this guy. And, and Jay Hay was, was phenomenal. Not so much in the postseason, but he, he was incredible. But he pointed to that guy. He pointed to Freddie. He points to the people, Max Muncie, you know, he stepped up in his voice this year. Um, you you don't get old school managers. Oh, they could not do that. They could not. I, I mean, I could imagine Lou Pinella having a fight, you know, picking a fight with somebody like Jay Hay for wanting to have a voice. I, I, maybe not that one. Maybe not that far. Jay Hay's a good guy, but still, like Dave is is uh, so damn good at his job. And yeah, the people who say fire Dave Roberts are they're the people who maybe go to like three games a year to get really really just shit faced and. <laughs> they they read about it. They read about the team still in print media, 
You know, it's like they don't know what's going. They email us when things happen to the Dodgers. You know, those. <laughs> like, so I can't from, believe you did this. I can't. I can't believe you did this. Why would you snail do this? mail? Yeah. Snail yeah. Mail. Well, next yeah. next year they'll be getting Blake snail and mail. a letter. Yeah. Yeah, it's like yeah. In a letter. Yeah. Dear Dave Roberts. Yes. Dear Dear Dave yeah. Roberts. All right. Last thing. Are you happier to be a Dodger fan or an Eagles fan? At the moment. <laughs> This is uh this is the most strained my fandom of 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 the Dodgers has been for sure, uh, but I'm a baseball guy. I I love this I love this sport. I love this stupid painful sport. And as much as I'm saying f you Dodgers, you're the worst. I never want to see you again. Uh, you know it's already on my calendar. Pitchers and catchers reporting. Um, Dodgers all the way, man. And I'm looking forward to a very, very long, very frustrating, uh, hot stove. Uh, where not much is going to happen and everybody thinks that the team is terrible and then everybody will be very excited showing up at Camelback Ranch uh, sometime in, in early to mid-February. But, uh, you know, go Birds, but, you know, I bleed Dodger Blue. His question actually just made me think about this for, for our finisher is, so Dave Roberts and many other managers, their top role is psychologist because you have a big payroll, you usually get a lot of talent, and he knows you have to be able to manage all of that, sit dudes, right? And it's not the yeah. platoon part. It's just also having depth. The Dodgers were one of the first teams to say, hey, depth really matters. Let's make sure mm -hmm. we have that consistently. Because in the regular season, everyone's going to lose people. And when they do, some people are going to call up guys that shouldn't be in the bigs right now. And some are going to be like, oh, that dude could be starting on X amount of teams. That takes skill. He has that. And I say that because... When he asked you, would you rather be an Eagles or a Dodgers fan right now? I could do the same thing with, would you rather be a Padres fan? Would you rather be a Mets fan? Would you rather be a Cardinals fan? Would you rather be a Yankees fan? These are all big market, big money. Cardinals should spend more, but I'm putting them in that category. Talent teams that did not mm -hmm. even make the playoffs. So yeah. just something to keep in mind, too, for Dodger fans. Well, Ray of Sunshine. Yeah, they're running things pretty good there to be able to actually yeah. give yourself a shot. Yes, they have to figure out how to win some playoff games and win that tournament-style atmosphere a little bit better. Um, I think most people would agree, but, like, they make it every year. Most fan bases don't. Like, this was the year of utter disasters, more than we've ever seen to, yeah. for a team to spend that kind of dough, right? I've never seen anything like it, those kind of teams falling, especially the yeah. Mets and Padres. Those two stand out to me because of the star power that was there. And it's not even like they were hurt. Padres had most of their dudes most of the year, and the Mets, for yeah. the most part, were okay. I mean, I Edwin know JV Diaz. was hurt to start the year, but wow, well, true. Yeah, the Dia, the Diaz thing, Diaz the WBC, hurt. that that really crushed them there. Padre, the Padres just couldn't figure out how to play together until September. But you saw what they really could be in September. What they went twenty and seven or whatever. It's gonna be a yeah, scary when, team when if, it didn't matter if, though. <laughs> When That's it didn't my thing. Matter. Hey, at least they, you know they played up until what the final weekend where they thought they had something. You know, Manny Machado barely played in the last any defense in the last two months because of his barking elbow. Uh, if they get any of their pitching back, that's going to be a, a really scary team. But you know, we're already here and they're going to not spend as much. So um, it, that'll be another. It's going to be a fun off season. I tell yes, you, I, I wish I wish I wish for Dodgers fans it was not starting until sometime in early November. And all right. Also, I mean, this isn't going to affect your team most likely because they're not going to trade him there. And I don't think that that's what they're going to be going after anyway. But in addition to the Otani conversation and, and what teams need to do, and there'll be some serious changes going on with some of those ball clubs, you would think. Uh, I think Mike Trout might get traded. And I just think the name and the star power, and you can say whatever you want about him, you know, not being on the field as much lately. Hey man, Trout Mike and Trout and in the same offseason, dude. That is epic. Mike, Mike Trout, man. Uh, I would love to see that guy. Uh, not even just playing the postseason. I'd love to see him play. <laughs> One of these years, maybe he can might play some baseball. You know, he's played. I think people are are a little too one one well? game after the All Star game or after, after July fourth. One game, tough. Mike Trout, and and I think he hasn't played a full season since like 2015, 2016. Yeah, you, you flash back a few years, I think any fan base would say, give me Mike Trout immediately. Now it's like, how can you rely on him? Can you really rely on him? Because uh, he's hurt in the second half. But 
Do you want him? All money is the same. Forget money for a second. Do you want him or James Outman as one of your starting outfielders? I, I I will take Michael Trout. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> Final I would answer. like the world to know right, he's still an excellent ball player. This was like oh, I yeah. think by far his worst year, and he was a three win player, one thirty one OPS plus, yeah. three sixty seven on base. Like when the dude's out there for the most part, he's still in pretty good shape. Yes, I agree. The games played, um, not great lately. Eighty two. Yeah, he I played one nineteen is- last year in twenty twenty two. He had a good, uh, he had a full, a full season in in uh, twenty, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's no, really easy to have a full down. season in twenty. Um, yes. No, but you, you want to? I would trade for him if the money was right. Let's put it that way, and I think many teams yeah. should think the same way. Yeah, I, you can. We can definitely debate. You, you're yeah. gonna have to buy some money down for the most part, <laughs> especially with the Angels. Um, yeah, he's uh, in my opinion, tough, he's but... the most, uh, he's the most untradeable player in baseball because of that contract and what you need to get back. For Artie Moreno and Perry um, Nazian to what they need to get back to be able to justify to their fan base, you just traded Mike F and Trout. <laughs> oh, you better get some names back. And then on the other side, oh, I just mortgaged my entire farm to get this guy. Tough, tough spot for Mikey there. We're good friends like that. I call him Mikey. Mikey. That's I still nice. think he can get traded though. I do. I, I, I think hope. I've still got, I've got just like the Dodgers think they're front runners for. Otani, I'm in the Philly area a good amount. In Atlantic City, we do shows there all the time. And I'm telling you, they come up to me already. It's been the last few months. Once they heard there was even like a chance that he could get traded, they go, you think we can get Trout? They love him. He's he's Millville. He's South Jersey. They love him. They know that their Mm -hmm. owner doesn't give a shit. He spends. It's stupid money. And for the most part, it's been pretty fun, that stupid money to ride along. And same thing. Does Trout make their outfield better? Yeah. And do do they maybe pick up more money than most teams would? Yeah, and I think it would be fucking sick if Trout's playing for the Phillies next year. And also, again, we need – and I know Trout you know, is not the best player in the game anymore, especially based on the games played, right? Like Otani is a better player. But regardless, and, and we pick on this team a lot, and Angels fans, absolutely many of them despise me, even though all I do is shit on Artie Moreno. But I guess, yeah, I don't yeah. know, maybe he pays them to say shit to me. But Mike <laughs> Trout and Shohei Otani – have not been in the postseason. Trout, yeah, for five minutes um, and got swept up by Kratz, but they have not been in the postseason, essentially. Like, that can't happen. I'm worried about the sport, and I want to be entertained, and I want everyone to see those guys in October. I'm big on that. And the fact that neither of them have been there besides Trout for five seconds against the Royals in a sweep a billion years ago can't happen. So I just think that could make the offseason wild. Yeah, if that baseball would love to have – uh, of at least a month and a half of Mike Trout rumors before Artie or Perry come out and say, we're not trading Mike Trout. Just give it some yeah. time. Let us have something, you know? <laughs> right. Give us our moment. Give I it just, to yeah. us now. I, we can't even, like with Trout, I can't even say like, you know, someday years from now, I'm going to be like, dude, yo, there was this guy, Mike Trout. He was insane. He did it all. Like, oh, was he clutch? I don't know. I mean, his team was never so, even like a playoff world, contender for know. the last couple yeah. months. I'm like, I don't even know. I, I, I don't know. We, we don't know. That sucks. Am I wrong? Did I say anything wrong? And, and yeah. when we get that chance, and when we get that chance, we're talking about somebody who's now in his mid-30s. You know, we don't know what prime, prime Mike Trout was going to look like. I mean, if, just give him a half a decade earlier from when he's playing with with Mike Sosha's Angels, and you know Garrett Anderson, you you, you, know, you had Jared Washburn, you had these these guys. Those are only two names I pulled out of my ass right now. I got more. We can go, but I know, I know uh, you guys <laughs> probably want to change the subjects at some point. But, no, 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 uh, I like it. But also, uh, last thing on Trout too, and our guy Derek behind the scenes said forty home runs in twenty twenty two, not like in twenty seventeen. Forty home runs. Yeah. 6.3 war in 119 games. The like, fact, yeah, that's insane. And, and I mean, those are, those are honestly Shohei numbers. He did kind of the stars. same thing this year. Shohei did the same thing this year. Yeah. And those yeah, guys that's playing what I'm together. Like, people are too hard on pitching, Trout right now. Relax. With any, yeah. Yeah. Hey, right? listen, I'm, again, I'm already in Eagles season right now. So I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm still, this, is, this is hours later. I got home last night. First thing I did was poured myself. A whiskey and I and at the same time like a moron, I cracked open like some sort of you know fizzy drink or whatever. So I was not I was not ready to uh to have this day quite yet. We were not expecting it. Win one game, man. 
Anyways. Well, we're here for you, dude. You were, you're a star. That was really fun. Um, appreciate the extra time there, too, because I think it was it was worth kind of laying it all out, and we call it therapy sessions. So we're yeah, here for you. For uh, Clint, thank you, dude. Appreciate it. Great yeah. talking to you. Yeah, and I want to say, say to you guys, if I'm still on, I don't know. Yep, I think you're I'm here. Off, right? you're okay, here. I want to say here. to you guys, you know, I might not see you again immediately after, but congrats on a great first season. You know, it's fun watching you guys, uh, you know, the rotating, uh, uh, you know, co-hosts and everything. Uh, you, you guys are great. Keep, cr- keep crushing it. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate that. that. Yeah. Trying to bring, uh, trying to get these guys to say whatever the fuck they want. Um, right. <laughs> they got that clubhouse culture. They don't want to be like Orlando Arcia. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Kratz. Attaboy. Attaboy. Scroll Attaboy. back. Attaboy, Scroll Kratz. back and, and, and see that juice. Kratz versus the media. But actually he yeah. was on our side. So, but appreciate it. Thank you, Clint. Yeah. It's, Thanks, it's guys. been a fun appreciate ride. And we like being part of the creator crew here. So. Go Eagles. Um, have a good one, dude. Yeah, yeah. Go, go Birds. Eagles. That's right.